Hello, YouTubers. This is a new series where, you know, I get together with uh, members of the standard community and discuss, you know, existing, you know, kind of concepts and ideas about the standard, you know, new projects, things that we want to evolve in the engineering standard, or, you know, questions that people might have around, you know, uh, how we build specific things or uh, evolve and develop specific things. And hopefully we can find some answers and find the logic behind some of the uh, approaches and practices or just change them if needed be and i'm joined today by my dear friend christo how are you doing my friend oh yes son. No, i'm doing well thank you do, do, do you prefer if i called you chris or christo which one is your uh, favorite? E either one is fine i don't see that's that's my brother <laughs> right there I, you know it doesn't give me a hard time about anything right so so you know two things just just to kind of uh, let people know about you know, what's happening with the standard and the standard community and what are we up to these days? One thing that I've done recently is to basically something that just popped up in my head the other day. And I said, OK, all these people that have been kind of evolving and working according to the standard, it might probably be beneficial if I just go and say, give me your opinion. What did you you know, how did you benefit from the engineering standard? You'll find a nice section. Here. I'm going to push that section to the bottom, though, because, you know, I don't want to confuse people with you know, where it should land. I went and basically asked people to kind of, you know, give me their insights, their their ideas about how the standard kind of helped them, you know, uh, with their, you know, personally as a, a, a personal project or a side project or as a, a, a team or an organization or, you know, in general, reading through the standard, how did it help you? And I saw some really cool things like, hey, I got my first <laughs> job as a developer. You know, that's Florian, I think, you know, he just left, left that comment. I see people, this is another comment that really is heartwarming. The standard helped me transition from intimidated to empowered, you know, so a lot of engineers. And this is one one huge step for us because I really want engineers out there to kind of love what they're doing and kind of enjoy the experience itself of building software. And I feel like, you know, Chris, you, you you probably know this more than I, you know, our industry can be a little bit quite dark, you know, there can be quite uh, competitiveness and no sharing and, you know, oh, go figure it out on your own and imposter syndrome on top of all of this and then things mm. just get, get out of control. So I just wanted, I'm, I'm still getting kind of uh, answers on that survey, you know, just people still coming in and contributing and, and kind of sharing their thoughts I'm very, very grateful to all of you. Like we're up to like 20 comments now and people are still kind of pushing in mm. more and more. I'm going to make sure that this comes out in the printed copy of the standard. What do you think about that idea, Chris? You know, we, we, we should probably include, you know, because a book on its own is just ideas. It doesn't mean anything. Yeah. But if we can actually go and tell people, no, here's some people, but some of these folks I actually worked with on actual projects. Uh, here's Sam from, from Odata, Paul Wardy. You know, Gitika works with me on my team, Bahavna, you know, someone I've been mentoring for a while now, people from all over the place, you know, coming in and saying, okay, here's the, here's what we share. Here's what we have. What do you think about that? I think that's a good idea, right? I think he did. Yeah, no, definitely. Kind of, yeah. 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 But nice to see how the standard impacts uh, people's uh, experience. Um, our industry is evolving so fast. So it's nice, nice to le learn as a collective. It, uh, People always find nice stuff to do, and uh, if we can share it that way, then everybody learns. That's it. Holding everyone's hand and crossing the road together. That's really what I'm trying to do, you know. And uh, you know, I can't hold everyone's hand, but if I hold your hand and you hold someone else's hand, you know, that's how we all can cross, you know, together. That's the whole idea of this. Okay, so I just wanted to kind of put this out there, and you know, again, you know, like the the standard is open source. It's out there come in, put issues. I've seen a lot of people putting issues on the standard, you know, saying, okay, here's some, th some things that we're not really comfortable with. Here's some things that can be improved and all that. And on that topic, you know, I was just chatting with Chris before we started our session. And I said, hey, what do you think? What, where should we go, you know, and what should be a good first topic? And he mentioned something about tracing. And it's actually an issue that someone uh, put in there. Let's see, concrete examples, explain, uh, write section about, uh, distinguishing exceptions and dependencies, cul-de-sac, document internal mock, uh, delegate, traceable. There it is. So, uh, so, so, Mar, T A S B. 
uh, basically someone left in here a comment and they basically said, hey, where's the tracing? We don't see any tracing in your in your engineering standard, right? We do log for bugs and and uh, and basically exceptions. We do catch that and we make sure that it's actually, you know, kind of properly documented. But there are things that we're not logging today, right? Like if you pick up a certain system like this, let's pick up a let's pick up git file. You know, here's the source code of git file. It's a great example. I'm going to go up in here. I'm basically going to go here. Here's git file. Let's go into a simple example, like add contribution event, for instance. You're sending a contribution event through a queue, right? I want to basically go and say, well, I want to trace that, like even if an exception doesn't happen. Like if you go into through these exceptions, when an exception happened, we literally say create and log validation exception. So we go here and say, give me that exception and log the issues that happened right before you return that exception thanks to to chris and his amazing contributions now we are sure that what we log is what we return this is a huge upgrade by the way thank you for that mm -hmm. but that's not enough right chris but because what happens when the happy path happens i have no idea that something went through my system right and actually uh kind of happened in the way so let me give you my pr preliminary thoughts about this Ideally, we should end up doing something like this, logging broker.trace. And then here's the here's the magical part. This returning contribution function has two pieces of information in it. It has method and it has another piece of information in it called target. And these two things are amazing. Why is that? Because that's literally the method that has been called and the object that has been passed to this method at the time like the value that was passed to this method at this time. Let's prove it, right? Let's prove it. Yeah. Of course, the logging, logging broker doesn't support that yet, so I'm just going to go here and just put these in a variable. Var x equal and var y equal, like that. And I'm going to, let's go here, control minus, take me back to where I was. Here we go, control kd. Y. So look at the values that are coming here, and then we'll understand the problem, right? If I go into any of the tests or this method in here, and we have many, many, many tests as we should. <laughs> so here it is. I'm gonna I'm gonna run this in debug mode. Let's take a look at this. So I'm sending a contribution event. And here's the results of that. Come on. There we go. See, 64 gigs of RAM is not enough for this thing. <laughs> what should we do? <laughs> Running it on 64 bit. What should we do, Chris? Huh? What? Where do we go, right? Got too much RAM there. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, did I pick up the wrong one? Hold on. This is... Uh... <laughs> Let's see. This is the contribution event service at contribution event. And we did run. Did I forget to put a breakpoint? No, I did. Okay. So I'm going to go here. Go over here. Contribution event. Oh, this is the processing service. I want a contribution event service. There it is. And here is the add. And I'm going to do a debug. Here we go. This is a massive code base, of course. That has a lot of things going on in it. it. Here we go. So watch this. If I go into the method piece, I don't think this method, I don't think the, the hovering is showing on the uh, uh, the uh, 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 stream yard. So I don't know if you can see this, though. I can see you. You can see Message it, right? Box, yeah. So this guy here has two things. It has two custom attributes, and these attributes has attributes within it. It has a whole bunch of details in here. But what I want to do is to show you where it shows the actual. There it is, the the actual method name. So you see, this is this is here is the declaring type in here. So it tells you exactly where the exact location of yeah. the method. So I'm going to copy that here for a second and put it in Notepad just to kind of 
it can kind of show it to people. So there's a declaring type. But also, in addition to the declaring type, it also puts in the method name. Let me let me kind of expand this a little bit. This is really, really small, I understand. Yeah, contribution event service. And then I want to, so we want to know where it is, but we also want to know the method name out of it. And I think the method name is not even in the attributes. It's in, there it is, at contribution event right there. So that's yeah. the name. So I'm going to also save that one here on the side. Right. And then I'm going to kind of switch over and go to the target. If you if you jump to the next one, this target here is supposed to be your input parameter. So if you open up this one here, let's take all of this. Here's your input parameter. That's the contribution event that I just passed in with yeah. all its details. See that magic? So, so target is great. Uh, you can get the details. Now I'm going to switch back to the notepad just to show people what we have here. Here it is. So if you look a little bit closer like this, you'll see, okay, I need this piece of information all the way up to here. This is a good piece of information, right? So I need this. So I'm going to take this down. Sorry, I'm going to take like a copy of it. Right, so that answered the where. Where did it happen, right? Which method, right? That would be this part in here. Yeah. Right, and then what parameter that was passed in, that would be the target. I'll just say target in here. What do you think about that, Chris? Does this does this look like the information that we need to kind of make this happen? Yeah, that that that's certainly a lot uh, of info there that, that we can do. Um, I bet a lot of people didn't expect that little delegate that we pass and have all that kind of information in it. You no, know, <laughs> it's, it's nice nice to see all that. Yeah. Um, uh -huh. So. <clears throat> So the, the the way I've I've done tracing in the past is um, I've more used uh, the diagnostic libraries of um, that that comes with system diagnostics and they've got an activity class on there. Mm -hmm. So I don't necessarily pass all the um, the object details mm -hmm. uh, to 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 the tracing. I would pass the the tracing ID mm -hmm. uh, into the log trace so that I can correlate um, the logs with the mm -hmm. traces if I need more info but yeah mm -hmm. this is this is very nice to see right <laughs> that we've got all that stuff um, at hand right so we have all this but you mentioned something that's really important the correlation ID right we want to be able to go and say if you if you're actually this is a good thing that we have to mention as well just just so people understand like a lot of these things we are already researching. I'm just trying to kind of find the best way to present it to the world. Because if I can't present it properly to everyone, then it's not production ready yet. And that's the point of this mm -hmm. series is to basically go and say, here's what I have, right? Of course, the way we do things is very different. <laughs> so, yeah. you know, a lot of people be like, I, I don't even use these delegates, dude. How do we how do we even do that? But okay, here's the deal. Just for people to understand the importance of uh, tracing. You know, you have, you know, let's say you have your gatekeeper in a microservice architecture, and your gatekeeper is sending a request down to your, you know, let's say some, some uh, orchestration, I don't want to confuse people, let's say service A. Right. This is an actual microservice, micro service A. And microservice A is handing this over to micro service B. Okay. Now we want to trace that. We want to be able to go and say, and I'm just explain I, Chris, I know you know this. I'm just explaining it to everyone. You know, yeah, it's fine. That this is basically I want to be able to trace and say, okay, the the request that started here, request A, is still was an still was the same request that went through here, still was the same request that went through here. It's the same request, nothing has changed, right? How do we go about solving something like that? 
there's a correlation ID. Usually this correlation ID is something that the broker needs to be aware of, you know, firsthand. My thoughts about this is that when you have your startup CS or program CS, given how crazy people are about the new ASP.NET 6, whatever. So let's say this is your startup CS. You can actually intercept an incoming request before it reaches your controller. And you can read that from the header of the request. So your API yeah. request that's coming in is supposed to have a header that has correlation ID. And then startup CS will set up the broker to say, hey, part of the configuration, there's a correlation ID that I added there for you. And that correlation ID will basically be the ID that you log with every trace and every exception that's going through. So this guy goes and says, hey, dude, here's a configuration. And this configuration will have the trace ID or correlation ID. And then the broker will pick that up and say, okay, every event that I'm going to be logging from now onwards is going to have that correlation ID attached to it. Yeah. <laughs> if, if the incoming request does not have a trace ID in it, then generate one. So that basically means these that covers all the cases, right? So this is a request coming in. If that request is coming from a gatekeeper, then it, it should have a trace ID in the header. Yeah. If it doesn't have a trace ID, then generate a GUID and toss it to the broker and let the broker log every event, which means that also the API calls that happens at the API broker level should have that as part of the configuration and it includes it in the header. Yeah. That's my idea about correlation ID or how I want to upgrade the standard to have something like that. What What's your thoughts about this? Yeah, that, that sounds good. Um, so with the um, system, system diagnostic activity, um, mm -hmm. it generates that ID for you. And I think it works with, uh, it's got a W3C standard as well. So okay. if you look at that, it's very similar to a GUID that it generates. Uh, so the first part, would be your almost a transaction type ID thing. And then as it goes down the stack, it gets a more unique um, a right. number a number to it. Um, and the way that uh, the activity will consistent diagnostic, it, 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 it's a parent child relationship that goes down um, uh, the stack. Um, nice. Uh, so that that that's what I've seen and in, in, in things that I've touched on, yeah. um, and then um, uh, you can you can link that up with. Uh, there's, there's so many tooling nowadays. Uh, I know back in the day you had yep. to roll your own stuff, but uh, you can use something like Open Telemetry, which which also has got lots of exporters to um, App Insights or or various other things. Yep. Um, so yeah, there, there's there's quite extensive tooling, and um, uh -huh. uh, it, it it can work in, in combination with, with with your logging as well. I'm immediately thinking of um, your various log levels that you can tweak as well on your um, uh, startup CS where you set up your your logging. So, so you can say for specific things, I want detailed logs and tracing, while other things I, I I'm quite happy to ignore. Okay, so let me ask you this question, because this is a very common one. Um, there are situations where you don't want to log certain things, right? So there is there is some PII, personal payment information, yeah. or something like that. So you want to you wanna basically, so, so this is, I, I think that's what you're talking about. You know, Chris, as far as you know, what is this open telemetry thing? Can you explain it a little bit? So... <clears throat> Mm. Open telemetry is 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 something that uh, takes all your tracing stuff and then um, you, you you can um, mm. basically uh, search through it. Um, uh, it. It's got various exposures that you can use to 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 um, link right. stuff together. It can show you in the tooling depending mm. on on your exposures um, end to end. If you if you pass in a, a request from your uh, mm. front end to your API that then calls a microservice uh, and it then goes to say Azure message bus. It, 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 um, it's got a, a, something that they call a span that, mm -hmm. that links all of it together. And then mm -hmm. uh, you can visually see how long um, it took for that thing to, to, to complete from start to finish. And so you can also visually see mm -hmm. 
this tiny bit is the bit that that may is maybe the bottleneck in, in your system so you can pretty much trace the happy path through your system without having to interrupt anything to to see where um, there's performance issues or if, if there's anything that you need to isolate okay um, gives okay. you all that 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 metrics out of it um, okay so I'll, I'll tell you a couple of things though okay so it's basically it's basically a, a, a t but open telemetry is just tools just a bunch yeah. of tools sdks apis whatever the case may be i can see it in here so there's there's an, an sdk that has an api plugin you know and constructors and they're basically you know kind of communicating with each other to kind of bring in it's funny that it's also three what's that all about you know that's this is <laughs> fancy, you know but uh Trees, trees and trees and trees everywhere right but yeah. uh, you know um i think so th you know this is i i think this is their api life cycle and it's experimental and then stable and then deprecation huh yeah interesting okay so here's here's the challenges that we have in order for us to release that to the standard as a standard number one the the values that are coming from this delegate is really garbage like it doesn't come out in a good nice format that we can actually rely on so let me go back to this notepad that we have look how it comes out it comes out really bad like look like look it, it comes in with this little c underscore whatever like even the method name look how it's coming out yeah. right and i know sam Hsu knows about this sam Hsu, he a He's the master of these things. Like he tells me, this is here is generated, son. You're not supposed to rely on it, right? You you can't rely on that, right? But the information is there and it's available. We need better tooling underneath, you know, the .NET or above the .NET SDK that can give us that information. Because if you go try to test drive this, right, it's really really bad to go and say, well, uh, this dot uh, logging broker mock dot verify and then i don't want to go and do this broker dot log trace right and then go and say you know a, a, a name contains right what's the problem with this mm -hmm. if i go and say name contains because i don't want everything in it i just want and there's no way for you to figure out what these values are going to be yeah so if i do this this is bad why is that because if i have a function called add student and there's another function called add student card add student card could be the one that's being called and this will still pass yeah we can't do that right i mean realistic realistically how we name our functions it's either ends up with async if it's asynchronous or with the s plural but there are situations where you don't have that option like i'll show you a real life kind of function that we have at the processing level let's go back to git file watch this if you go into um, a processing service for which one is this digestion yeah so if you look at the a processing services at the effort level you're going to find a function like this verify effort changed hmm. right it's a processing service. It has a higher order business logic. It uses a bunch of existing primitive operations to do something with it, right? You can't actually do that. It becomes a problem because what if you what if your function, your next function is verify effort changed async, and you have two of these, one that's yes, you can't, right? So these are this is this is one of these challenges. The second thing is this target see i can sell it to people i can go and say look the target has the values in it but i have to also be honest the target if the input parameter is a primitive level like a guid or something it's not going to give it to you for god knows yeah. why i have no idea why it doesn't do that so this is the real challenge that we have we need to kind of figure out like and this is a this is an assignment for everyone watching this video or in standard community and i'm also looking into this in addition to other things you know the we need to figure out how can we massage this data a little bit right even Christo, even if it means that we override the delegate itself yeah 
like this is an idea that I'm having, right? To go and say, okay, if the delegate has this information and it's not good enough, what if I had my own custom delegate that kind of overrides this? Still the same thing, but it kind of gives me that massaging of data that I want. What do you think about that as a, as a problem and a solution? Yeah, that could be a nice uh, proof of concept to play with to see where we can get with that. That's pretty much it. I think, on you know, off the top of my head, you know, tracing is super important. Like right now, it's the highest priority, you know, as a topic to research in the standard and, and do it in, a, in something that is uh, proper, right? Uh, there has been a lot of discussions also around, uh, you know, you know, the validation, you know, validating dates and validating individuals, you know, uh, tokens and stuff like that around security in general. A lot of people, mm -hmm. like, I can't tell you how many people reached out and be like, Hassan, like this series that I just started with the security, it's just pressure. That's peer pressure. <laughs> I did not want to do this. And people were like, no, we want it right now. And I was like, okay, I'll talk about <laughs> security, no problem. <laughs> but, you know, you guys just have to understand, like, like so far that the last two sessions that I just showed with people, I'm just trying to slowly introduce them to security. I feel like the security topic you know, is intentionally secure by up security. Like it's confusing intentionally just so people <laughs> kind of run away from it. You know, <laughs> you know, you know, you know, what's the most on demand positions are these days in the software market, cybersecurity. Nobody yeah. wants to do it. Nobody's excited about it. N not everyone wants to be a hacker, you know, so nobody's excited about, you know, kind of securing systems and stuff like that. And there's a high, high demand on that. I even, I was talking with a, a, uh, a one of my friends. He's, he's he's a great guy. You know, he's he was telling me people are even now talking about quantum security, like using quantum computing. You know, okay. to secure, you know how you can use like <clears throat> assuming that quantum computing goes mainstream because you probably need to kind of ha you know have an arm, you kind of sell an arm and a leg to just kind of make something like that happen. Quantum computers can actually break codes and break into systems a lot faster than your typical kind of brute force kind of thing mm -hmm. without even without even kind of exceeding a certain number of attempts and stuff like that you know which are by the way back from the ASP.NET MVC world that was like the easiest thing in the world like they had everything ready you know you remember the MVC you had a login page you yeah. could literally just have properties that says if it exceeds that number of uh, attempts break. It also had even notifications. I could pass an event like a broker and it will send an email to confirm that this email is actually, you know, valid and stuff like that. And yeah. you see, it had everything in it. You know, in Blazor, we have a long way to go. We might inherit some of that stuff and kind of use it, or we might just make up our own. So still, if you're happy with logging into a Blazor application, remember in the real world, you need to have remember my password send a notification to verify email, reset password with an email. Like security is like a whole thing. It's a big only, minefield, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's a big thing. And there's a lot of things that you need to do. Two-factor authentication. How do you refresh the page as soon as you click authorize on your phone, right? I, I guess Brian Parker would talk a little bit about Hub. And <laughs> he's crazy about these things. He'll, he'll go and say, oh, yeah, you know, event hubs, we can do signal R you know, to kind of refresh the page and check if the authorization have actually happened. Uh, a lot of topics. Yes. <laughs> you, you're not going to be busy for a while, you know? <laughs> you know, I, I, and I really appreciate this because this is, to be honest with you, like I, I keep advocating and telling people, hey, pair program, pair program, pair program. I just started something with my team at work where I would say pair on design too. Like if you're designing something, I'm going to assign two people to kind of go and run and kind of try and figure this out. But I also want to show people live, you know, in a stream like this, how we tackle these problems. I mean, the concepts and the per principles and the standard don't just pop out of nowhere, you know? Yeah. I mean, I, I mean, the idea pops out of nowhere, <laughs> you know, but coming in and actually making it standardized and making it production ready, that's the challenge. And this is yeah. gonna be our challenge this week. You know, I'm gonna try to research this. Feel free to, you know, you know, uh, Chris to take a look at it as well. You, here's where my head is, right? If we can, just at, at minimum, if we can figure out that delegate thing, right, that would be the biggest piece that we can kind of introduce to the standard community and the, you know, software engineering industry in general, right? I will do my own research as well. Where my head is, is to customize that delegate. 
Okay. Right? But I don't know how that's going to look like. There's also another approach that I had in my mind. I thought to myself, well, maybe I can't hack that delegate. But what if I go, let's see, where's my screen? What if I go like this, Chris, and basically say here, minus, control minus. Oh, this guy's still waiting. So what if I go and take this entire delegate and just pass it to another dimension? Like you see how we're having in here, we have dot exceptions, dot validations. We would have, we would have a third one in here that's called dot tracing like this. Okay, yeah. Which is something I'm also thinking about. So this would be dot trace tr traces or tracings. It has to be plural somehow. And uh, basically in here we would go and say, okay, here's how I'm gonna determine and massage my data to trace the things that I care about. Because yeah. again, for everyone, it's not one size fit all. Don't do entanglements in some places around the world you can't log everything <laughs> you can't have personal information at rest and if it and, you, and if you can it needs to be encrypted so who's going to do that encryption so we need that dimension called mm. traces yeah. right um i thought that i had is to basically go and say private and then say uh trace like this and it will take that delegate which is returning see how everything is playing together so nicely thanks to partial classes right and then in here basically do that massaging of data yeah what you want to log and what you don't want to log which basically makes the code even so much cuter because now i can go here and say trace and then pass in that returning function yeah it, it doesn't make the code look ugly it's a very tiny change it's separated yeah. in its own concern yeah i like that that, that a lot um and, and then even if you um, use the system diagnostic class there, your activity um, can tell you um, how long it took because you can set your activity dot start Ooh, and end. Ooh, nice. So nice. I I want to give I want to give the engineers the 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 five questions: where, who, why, what, and then the last one: how to fix as well. Yeah. And how to fix this is a big one for me because I want people to get the error message, but I don't want someone setting supporting a system to be just sitting there and saying, well, what am I supposed to do with that error? Like yeah. imagine an intern, right? Or an entry level engineer. They just joined the project. Imagine if their logs is telling them what to do. Hmm. Make it nice and easy. I think I think that's pretty cool, right? So I'm going to do a little bit of research. Let's circle back next week, you know, and try to keep at it. If we keep hacking at it, we will eventually get a new a new thing in the standard, a new section, a new chapter, you know, that can actually talk about tracing and all that kind of stuff. Um, Chris, did you say, mm. just, just out of curiosity, did you say system diagnostics dot activity? Yeah, I think it's an yeah, activity. And it just has, so what's inside of an, of an activity? Like if I say var x equals. So so you, you create your activity. I, I can't remember all, all the things on top of my head at the moment, but you, you, you define your activity and you can give it a name. Um, and when you start it, your, 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 your stopwatch basically starts on that. Mm -hmm. um, and then you can also inject extra metadata into your activity that will then go down the stack for everything else that you oh want to associate. God. Like add so event, think, add tags, all of so, that. So, so yeah. yeah, so you can tag your stuff um, and, and that makes it searchable. So if you've got something like Elasticsearch or something like that, you can, you nice. can search for your things uh, based nice. on the tags. Um, and I think on baggage is, is, is where you can add your um, properties. If you want specific properties like a, a student ID or something like that, you can nice. you can inject that into your. Um, nice. um, so so the examples that I see basically wraps this activity around uh, that bit of business logic. Mm -hmm. So um, at that. Um, uh -huh. um, so that that can work quite well if you inject your. Um, a returning function like that into the trace method because it's it's just sending it in it it wraps that mm -hmm. 
and also um, like you explained earlier when you create the activity mm -hmm. um, there's a static method on the activity that that will pass or make that um, activity ID available for for, for anything that uh, is, is downstream nice. so if if, right. if 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 you call your broker and say uh, that's that that is wrapped around your broker um, mm -hmm. your parent ID will automatically be sorted you don't even have to do logic for that oh and there you go Oh, you're not kidding. Trace ID generator. So, um, um, so a lot, a lot of stuff in this tooling is, is, is already if you out, out of the box. And then, uh, um, uh -huh. if you then use something like open telemetry and you, you get all the visual visualization and stuff, depending on what, uh, exporter you want to use. Um, nice. Nice. So, so there, there, there's, a, there's a few options. I'll, I'll look, I, I think I saw a couple of years ago a very nice tutorial on this uh, from jimmy bogart i'll try and find that okay. um it might That's be a good start to to pick this up on i like that i like that a lot uh there's this this trace id generator that you just talked about that's uh wow this is a this is a function i guess that you can call what does it return though it um, returns it's, I don't even think you have to use that. Um, if, if you define your activity, that um, it will initialize it with an ID, but you can also generate um, other IDs. Um, nice, nice. Okay, okay. So let's tackle it one by one. So the first one here, it's okay. So we we want to tr trace happy paths. Yeah. And then the second one is uh, integrate correlation IDs, yes. right? And then leverage open telemetry. Yeah. What do you think about that? Yeah. Um, so so another one on that is um, that, that correlation ID there, because you're not necess necessarily logging all your information in your trace, mm -hmm. you can inject that um, uh, correlation ID or, or the activity ID straight into a normal log. Mm -hmm. So if you do a log error, mm -hmm. um, you can pass a correlation ID to that. So if you pick up something in your uh, uh, tracing and you want to find more information about what happened, then you can mm -hmm. check your logs. Yep. Um, th the idea that I had, you know, is to basically go and say, okay, this guy now is going to have a configuration, I configuration injected in it. And this configuration is going to be basically something that automatically and your logging broker adds in configuration dot uh, correlation ID like this. Yeah. You don't even have to worry about it. It's just something that happened at the beginning with the request. Yeah. It becomes more interesting if this correlation ID doesn't exist, whether you are like it's easy on the API side, like your controller, we can intercept and say, unless the header has a correlation ID in it, you yeah. know, go ahead and create one or, or, in a cul-de-sac pattern, if you're getting the message through a queue, so there's no controller, yeah. right? Somehow the broker that's sitting there needs to tag that, needs yeah. to, 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 that so, to do something. Yeah. So, yeah. so I think the the activity takes care of that automatically. It will inspect your headers for you for something. Otherwise, it will create it. So you don't even have to worry about injecting a uh, correlation nice. ID for you. Nice. Um, nice. Uh -huh. So that simplifies it a little bit. But yeah, I think this is this is going to be a nice thing to play with. Um, hey, this is this is the real stuff. The beautiful thing about all of this, of course, you know, uh, Chris, is that you know the amount of engineers that can benefit from one simple change like this. Because we have all these folks now that are you know kind of benefiting and building you know their their systems according to the standard. So it's like it's automatically a journey where you're doing your day job. But you're also learning something new. You're evolving because you keep getting all these new information. And then on top of all of this, you're actually you feel a part of a community and you're contributing to something that benefits everybody. I was just talking to someone about this the other day. Said this little tiny discovery that you had about not having to do a throw exception with a funk like an action. Mm -hmm. This in and of itself is impacting people everywhere because now you're simplifying the code. Yeah. I think that's how the tech industry is supposed to operate. It's supposed to be one big hive mind where we're learning from each other's mistake, right? Mistakes. Instead of having to research over and again, what is the regex expression for validating emails? 
over yeah, and over. Yeah. There's no topic that's been killed. Maybe that's why, you know, I can tell like 80 to 90% of Stack, stack Overflow um, databases is redundant to questions like these, like questions where are like, you know, this is this question has been asked many times, you know, if there's a community, yeah. you know, and people are connected to each other, they don't have to kind of ask these questions over in a game. Anyway, that's that's all I have today. What do you have? Any any last remarks before we wrap up on this one? No, I don't think I've got anything else. That's a, See, I no, already I love this series. Nice because to have joined you today. You're, you're kind of putting me on spot there and kind of like, Hassan, where's the tracing, right? <laughs> <laughs> Once we're done with tracing, yeah. we might explore uh, security a little bit more as a second top highest priority uh, yeah. for the standard. And then maybe the next one would be kind of, you know, start kind of introducing people to ideas around uh, rollbacks, uh, yeah. you know, uh, failure handling. There will be... Just just a teaser for people. Another thing that I'm out of the hundreds, you know, that I'm researching on the side is you'll be you should be able to go and say something like this with rollback. And there's a lot of things in here. I can even begin like okay, I'll 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 share some of that at some point in time, mm. but it even changes how our restful API works. Mm. Right. It adds in a, an entirely new idea around, you know, what's really a rollback and what does it mean and what happens when the command has already left your realm and went to an external API. Yeah. How do you roll that back? Right. We have to invent a new HTTP verb for that one. I had to actually go research. Apparently in RESTful APIs, uh, HTTP verbs are customizable. Like they're saying, oh, go create your own. Like you have get, put, post, yeah. and 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 delete, but that's not all that it is. So I'm gonna be introducing a new one for rollbacks, you know. And oh, nice. it's very oh man, there's there's so much stuff in here, <laughs> and I'm just <laughs> trying to get it out. Hopefully, yeah. hopefully, hopefully they'll stop coming, but I don't think they will. They'll just keep coming. We'll yeah. talk about I, that at some point. Go ahead. Yeah. Go ahead. I, th I think when you said uh, your next one is the um bit more on security, that, that'll be good because I've picked up over the last week how many people talking about uh, uh, security brokers and, and tying that to services. So there's, there's a lot of yeah, a lot of people looking for that. So that, that'll be a good one to discuss. Yep. My private chats are not stopping. Hey, when are you going to talk about security? I'm like, okay, all right, we'll talk about it. I also, yeah. by the way, Christo, I think like everything I've introduced so far about security, I mean, the last couple of sessions, couple of videos, it's still cloud native. I want to introduce something called cloud foreign, you know, approach where it's a principle in the standard where how do I allow you to build your own identity server, right? Okay, yeah. and, I, and I know recently the uh, library that everyone was using for identity now is not for free. So that okay, yeah. Yeah. that's sad. So we might, by the way, you and I might just go build our own and make sure that it's always going to be free. <laughs> It's so, interesting, yeah. We we got ourselves a job. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, my dear friend, it's always a pleasure talking to you. And it's it's such a such an honor and, and fun to just, you know, sit down and kind of examine some ideas, you know, and see what you have to say about them. And you know, I really encourage our standard you know community just to hop in, come join these sessions and you know, ask all kinds of questions. If I you know, if 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 you have any or feel free to comment. You know, I know that uh, Monk wanted to join us, you know, but uh, he's on a trip. So he's like, man, I, I need to catch up on these sessions. So we'll make it, <laughs> we'll announce it ahead of time. We'll announce okay, it ahead yeah. of time. So people kind of get that chance. Thank you so much, Chris. I appreciate you, sir. Thanks, Hassan. And of yeah. course, yeah, yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> no, no, no. I'm That's fine. it. Yeah, of course, for people watching us, you know, <laughs> if you like this, these topics, if you like this series, let us know. We'll uh, continue to kind of, you know, chop away at, you know, some of these ideas, just know that the standard is never complete. It's always in draft mode. So don't be shocked if I come one day and say, hey, you know how we were doing all this? We're going to change all of this now because that's how we continue to evolve as species, like as people, human beings, our brains need to evolve, you know, and we need to kind of do things better, continue to do things better. It's not enough to get it done. It needs to be done right. And it needs to, it needs to be done pretty. So, uh, so we'll make it work, we'll make it right, and make it pretty. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, drop a comment in the comment section. 
And as usual, don't forget to like and subscribe. Thank you all, and see you in another video. Thank you, Chris. Thank you.